I've been in uh, uh, XR for almost 30 years, and I can say that this is the best time ever because it's now accessible, and there always used to be so few of us around town, and now there's hundreds with incredible great new ideas coming. I work in the simulation-based training program at Boston Children's Hospital, part of the Harvard Medical School uh, system, and um, we use uh, medical mannequins, fake babies, fake operating rooms with real equipment, for training individuals, whole teams, and so forth. Uh, in nerd terms, uh, this is immersive theater, basically VR with physical props. Uh, live action role play fits, although that sounds a little, they don't like it because it's too playful, but it's true. It is what they do. It also means that when I'm working with my colleagues, they have a much shorter learning curve in understanding VR and AR uh, than most, and I've found that really refreshing. So uh, they brought me in so we can work together and figure out how we can add XR to this environment. Um, now, we, uh, because we're nerds, we start counting at zero, and uh, we divide sort of the training into five zones. Uh, the first one is purely technical, right? You're learning to wrap a hand, learning to stick a tube down a kid's throat, see the plastic kid and the rubber hands there. Uh, zone one is clinical skills. So you have the trainee on the right <clears throat> who's in the role of a doctor taking care of one or both of these children who are simulators, and then family members on the left. These are live actors who are very skilled. They come in and they help the trainees deal with, uh, or learn to deal with real life situations. In zone two, uh, the trainee is using his or her technical skills in a technical uh, environment. So in this case, the trainees on the right, you have the plastic kid in the middle, and these uh, two women on the left would be clinician trainers, um, pot, usually playing a role in whatever he, you know, the procedure that he needs to learn how to be a part of. Uh, zone three is where we'll bring an entire team into the simulation space. A doctor, the nurses, um, you know, the residents, whoever is a member of that team currently practicing in the hospital, they might come into the simulation center to learn a new procedure or practice an old one on a mannequin. Zone four is real life and most of the action is after an operation is done and people are talking about it. So you can imagine uh, XR visualizations, perhaps 360 videos being quite useful here. A lot of what we do is 3D printing, which is in an interesting gray zone. Well, it's still in the physical world, but it is a way to express um, digital objects. So we will take CAT scan data of a particular patient's anatomy and print out parts of that person's anatomy that are of interest to the doctor. It might be a tumor, it might be an organ, and that way uh, the doctors can do surgical planning the night before. And uh, we can do printouts of soft, fleshy things, hard, rigid structures, we can do it all. Um, uh, one of them, for example, is the cleft lip surgery. It's a very common um, birth defect, and there's a basic surgery for it, which is, takes time to learn, has a fleshy exterior, and trainees, of course, can practice on it. So we produce a fair bit of these. So, uh, oh yes, and here's another one, the neurology head trainer. This is a t literally a talking head. It'll respond to its name, it'll roll its eyes, and uh, you can examine it for um, signs of neurological damage. 
So uh, they've, before I even came there, they've taken the physical props as far as they can go. So what can we do with XR? Well, <clears throat> uh, Christopher Williams and uh, Konstantin Kovetin uh, next door created a VR program where you can import um, CAT scan data of a patient, load them into VR, and uh, interrogate it. You know, basically move a cut plane through the data. So it's a, the downside is you can't touch it. The upside is that you can see inside it. And this application really belongs in augmented reality. The only reason they used a Vive is that the current AR headsets don't have enough resolution to them. But probably in the next year, they will. Um, the reason we're never going to get rid of these physical trainers is that the doctors need to touch things. Um, a recent study shows that the resolution of your fingertip, your fingertip can feel differences in textures down to 10 nanometers, um, which is uh, 20,000 times thinner than a human hair. So uh, that's why haptic displays for VR and AR will have their place, but their limits as well. A little bit about VR, it's great for tactical simulations, emotional immersion, um, it has its place. But this is, uh, we're here to talk about AR. With AR and physical trainers, we can have it both ways, right? We can project uh, patient data, internal organs, onto a physical model. Um, tablets right now um, work pretty well because they have a lot more compute power and a lot more resolution than, the, uh, for example, a HoloLens which, uh, or a Magic Leap. The downside of a tablet is it only has a monocular view, right? That there's only one camera. And when you're actually cutting with a scalpel, you need your depth perception with both your eyes to be there on the patient. So, this is somewhat useful. The other problem with the tablet is something has to hold it for you, uh, which is why AR glasses is going, are going to be the future. Here's one, uh, OpenSight by Novorod. Uh, they actually got approved by the FDA for surgical planning. Uh, someone who's very sharp in anatomy will notice that his bones are actually really not quite in the right place, but that's okay. It, it's just for surgical planning at this point. And it is better to see a person's anatomy scans projected onto their body rather than having to look over here at the scan and over there at the body. So that's the future. Now, uh, how are we going to make this practical, right? How are we going to actually fix kids and uh, improve the operations of the hospital? Well, we're going to draw on the 40, 50 year history of virtual reality for training, which has been fueling the use of augmented reality for training. So you, you see in this uh, image, it comes from Scope AR, um, where you have uh, virtual augments, instructions pointing to the real objects. And uh, if you talk to them, also another leader in the space is PTC with their um, uh, Vuforia Studio. They'll tell you that this has use in manufacturing, engineering, um, machine operations, maintenance. And so there's a lot of knowledge there. Well, how can we use it? Well, hospitals have a lot of equipment. That equipment has to be used properly. And the training is simple, it's, is not simple. Um, for example, when uh, you stick a line, a probe, through someone's shoulder and down into that heart, that probe has got to be sterile. And the sterilization process has a lot of boring steps to it. And if you forget one, it doesn't look any different. So we can use AR for both the training and even the actual process of cleaning. 
Um, this is a screenshot from um, a pilot uh, uh, program that I did with a uh, simulated arm of a baby. So on adults, you know, you can find the arteries and uh, the veins pretty well. It depends on the adult. But on babies, on kids, it's a lot more difficult. So we want our people to be very well trained. So this uh, silicon baby arm has fake arteries. It even has a pulse once you get it going. And um, I created an augmented reality uh, training program of five or six steps. It's actually a longer procedure that shows you how to do it. And so you have these uh, 3D images floating in space, showing the needle and the catheter going in, the needle coming out, and so forth. Um, and here I am. Uh, it deploys to the HoloLens. You can also use it on an iPad. So um, this is an iPad mini. At first, I used the biggest iPad I could find. It didn't work because my hands looked the size of dinner plates. And because people wanted to be able to look around the iPad when they're actually ready to put the needle in. Um, and so here's another example um, where uh, we have uh, the uh, geometry on the left, you know, and you see the arterial line connecting to the catheter. This was uh, artwork was provided to us by our friends at Scope AR. Uh, a little six second video. Um, I normally would not use the geometry and the video in the same frame, but again, this is a demo to show people what's possible. I'm available for questions. Um, I'll be around to the end of the, of the show.